Welcome to the news on the hours brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network Nigeria, ACN and Television. I am Rachel Ebunu. The government and those in position of power has been urged to rise and address the ugly situation of joblessness in the country. The rate of unemployment and underemployment in Nigeria has become a thing to worry about as this has exposed so many youths to crimes which ordinarily really they forbid and it posed as a threat to the security and growth of the nation. These were the positions of the primate of all Nigeria, the Most Reverend Nicholas Oku, and a former Minister of Foreign Affairs, also the Chancellor of the Church of Nigeria, ordained Ajumo Gubia, during an interview session with ACNN news correspondent Mwani Ogechuku and some journalists in Abuja. According to them, the church has little role to play, which is to employ and empower the few they can reach out to, adding that the bulk of the work is on the government. Well, I think that um, the church generally, I don't know, different denominations are trying to provide in one way or the other, even much better than we are doing. The lead should come from the authorities of the land because they control the funds of the people. All the money generated in the name of Nigeria is in the hand of the government. So they should administer this thing in, the, in favor of the people. Use it to bring about progress and happiness for them. So uh, while we are fighting Boko Haram, while we are fighting uh, bandits, while we are fighting um, um, herdsmen, uh, um, um, excesses, we should provide legitimate work for the people to do, to occupy people. I think there, is a, uh, there are so many areas that the government can tap into. Up to today, our race system is still not perfect apart from Kaduna to Abuja and what they are doing in the, in the southwest. The other areas, we can have a living railway system that will employ people as before. Even if it means suspending many things to do it, because of the importance and the employment opportunity there, it, it requires attention. It's important that um, the government takes this unemployment in particular um, very seriously. Uh, the number of unemployed is getting to dangerous levels and when people are unemployed in such large numbers uh, they become a threat to national security and that's what we're seeing. You're seeing people who are now going into crime um, out of desperation um, and it can only increase unless something is done. It's not going to go away by itself. Something Steps have to be taken to try and contain it and so I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure the government is is aware of this and are probably planning and taking steps to try and contain it. But it's, it's urgent now. They also condemned the xenophobic attacks on Nigerians in South Africa as they also urged Nigerians to stop the attacks on businesses that have affiliations with South Africa in the country, stressing that the government should look for a way to end the crisis. My own appeal to government is to handle it diplomatically. Because in the course of, um, what do you call it, public outcry, mob reactions, many things can go wrong. The government should handle it diplomatically. We shouldn't, because the people who have shops in, in ShopRite, are they not Nigerians? If you go there and destroy it, you are not helping the Nigerians now. If you go and attack, a, a, what do you call the um, MTN, Nigerians are employed there. The whole thing will collapse. And then we go further back. So the government should handle it diplomatically so that we, we should not behave like South Africans. Well, Nigeria and South Africa have had you know, long-standing relations. Um, Nigeria played a very instrumental role in the um, liberation of South Africa and its independence. Um, and that's the relationship we should protect. Um, I think South Africa also, also, also ought to um, take that into consideration in the way it manages a very potentially volatile situation. You've already seen some reactions here. People are attacking South African businesses and so on. That's, that's, that's the worst of, of the worst. Um, so the government must do whatever it can to contain the situation and, and manage the relationship with South African government through dialogue to try and stop this um, evil. 
The Primate of All Nigeria Anglican Communion, His Grace the Most Reverend Nicholas Oko, has reiterated that education in the communion is a very serious business as it is aimed at consecrating and making things holy unto God. Primate Oko made this statement during the dedication of the Dalcesian Women Water Project at Kuje in Abuja. ACNN News correspondent Mwani Ogechiku has the full detail. It was a dream come true for the Abuja Dalcesian President of Mother Senior, Mrs. Nkasiobi Oko and our members. A dream of imparting the church and society positively. As the primate of all Nigeria, joined with other priests in the Diocese of Abuja, came to celebrate with these women for actualizing the dream of a project which has been in the pipeline since 2012. The women were extremely happy as they danced to the tunes by the Zumata Mata group. <laughs> To appreciate God for the provision and for the grace to complete the project, the primate took the people around the building in songs of praise to God. During his speech, the primate appreciated those who have assisted in making sure that the water factory comes to reality, as he also congratulated the women's president and all the executive members of the committee for their good work. I'm very happy to be here today for this ceremony. This project has been on trying to make sure that we comply with all the requirements of the FCT government. There are many organizations that have assisted us. Uh, of course, the FCT is there. We congratulate you, all the executive, Madam, the leader, we congratulate you in Jesus' name. And the chaplain to the women, may God bless you all. This project will not scatter. Yeah. Compass Rose is an Anglican identity card, kind of, all over the world. This factory, as you know, dedication is to make holy. As we dedicate this water, it will become medicine. The primate assisted by other priests, dedicated the water factory. ...to declare this water factory, compass rose, open for use in the name of God the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Prayers were made at various points, such as the entrance of the building, the reception, the offices, the laboratory, at the water processing machines, the bore among others. During an interview, the president of the Mothers' Union, joined with other members of the executive, expressed their gratitude to God over the completion of the project. You know when you talk about the living water in the Bible, or you just talk about the living water, water is necessary for life. We know that there are so many factories that produce water, but we want to help our people, not only our people, people everywhere. You know, we women have been taught that every once in a while we have to do something to help others. So we decided to set it up so that we can get extra money to reach out to the less privileged and help them out. The for the Dalcisan Women Water Project was actually set up in 2012. It was inaugurated in 2012 and then the committee started work based on the terms of reference. But we had quite a number of we had quite a number of challenges uh, with regard to getting the land, getting approvals from the FCT. Yes, and uh, when that was done, we also had challenges obtaining NAFDAQ approval and all that. But we had full encouragement from the primate and Mama primate in particular. So we thank God that this has been accomplished today. And I'm really overwhelmed that is a success at last. We started there since uh, 2012 and we give all the glory to God that is being completed. My message is for those people that are going to manage 
the business. They should do it with due diligence. We give all the glory to God for he has done great things for us today. A project that was started since 2012 and today we have now seen the com that it has come to reality. So we are, I'm very happy. I'm very, very grateful to God. May his holy name be praised. Amen. I have seen a journey of many years coming to a successful end and which marks a beginning of another phase in this water project thing. Well, when it all started, nobody gave it a chance. They thought it was not going to work. And the bottlenecks that were experienced in trying to get approval for the various stages, they were up, all uphill, but God has shown us that truly is a faithful God. Uh, today, we all are witnesses to God, what God has done. He has done it, and all glory will return to him. We thank God for Mama Primate, for our focused leadership. The water factory is located at Kuje Abuja, with the name Compass Rose. The dream was conceived by the primate of all Nigeria during the 2011 Women's Conference, when he inspired the women to commence a Dalsisan water project. Mwane Ogechigo, ACNN News. Over 6,000 Christians in the diocese of Niger Delta Anglican Communion and beyond gathered at Alfred Deity Spiv Civic Center, Moscow Road, Port Harcourt, in River State to examine themselves, to commune with God and seek His face, especially in this time of the national crisis, and considering the state of the church that have been engulfed with various kinds of evil acts. ACNN News correspondent Nzubechi Frank has the details. The 2019 annual Diocesan Sunday School Conference of the Diocese of Niger Delta Anglican Communion, holding at the Alfred Deta Spiff Civic Center, Moscow Road, Port Harcourt and River State, which has its team as a sought for a man, is an avenue for evangelistic outreach. It kick-started with a formal opening ceremony and had in attendance dignitaries such as the chief hosts and hosts, the Bishop of the Diocese of Niger Delta, Anglican Communion, the Right Reverend Ralph Eberian and his wife, the Bishop of the Diocese of Umbamili, the Right Reverend Henry Okeke and his wife, the Bishop of the Diocese of Jalingo, the Right Reverend Foreman Nedison, clergymen in the diocese, distinguished personnel in the government, Chairman of the occasion, Her Excellency Dame Dr. Christy Toby, among others who came out from the various archdeaconries, the diocese and beyond. The Right Reverend Ralph Ebiren, the Bishop of the Diocese of Niger Delta, while declaring the 2019 annual diocese on Sunday School Conference open, spoke about the theme of the conference while encouraging Christians to prepare themselves to meet God, to ask God to let the light of God in them shine, and also while in an interview with ACN News crew, shared his view with regards to the theme of the conference. We, Ralph Cornelius Ebiren, the Divine Grace Bishop, that is of Nanyang Delta. This is our ninth year of consecration. On this day, fourth day of September 2019, as we gather in his presence for the 2019 edition of the Dashan Sunday School Conference, with the team. I sought for a man, Ezekiel 22:30, and we saw teams he reigns, Revelation 19:6. We declare this conference open in the name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and God the Holy Spirit. Prepare people to be out so that the Lord will find them and use them. In times like this, as we come, we do not see it as a jamboree occasion. but a time of sober reflection where we come to study the Bible and re examine ourselves whether we are in the race and getting ourselves ready for the second coming. And also, see how by the time we finish this program, we'll be relevant in our different communities. 
Her Excellency, the Chairman of the Occasion, also in an interview spoke about the theme of the conference and what it hopes to achieve. The theme of this conference is very apt. Knowing what is happening in the nation, we need people who can stand on the gap and plead with God to have mercy on Nigeria, on our families, on our church. We need prayerful people. We need dedicated children of God. We need people who will make positive impacts so that all these negative things we hear about our nation will stop. High points of the formal opening ceremony of the Sunday School Conference includes ministration by the Darcisian Choir and the Darcisian Band, corporate prayers, praises, worship, among others. In Port Harcourt, River State, Nzubechi Frank, reporting for ACNN TV News. The reign of God is not temporal, rather it is eternal. And so it is important to know that God owns the earth and everything in it, as the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. This was the assertion of the Bishop of Jalingu, the Right Reverend Foreman Nedison, while speaking on the first part of the sub theme of the conference, He Reigns. Bishop Nedison, who was a guest speaker at the 2019 Annual Del Season Sunday School Conference of the Diocese of Niger Delta Anglican Communion, encouraged Christians to always acknowledge God's supremacy. It is important for you to know that. God owns the earth and everything in it. Psalm 24 verse 1, he said, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. So God owns everything that we see in this world today. The reign of our God over the world is not temporal. It is eternal. In Psalm 146 verse 10, it said, The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. The reign of politicians has expiry dates. No matter how wicked our government leadership in Nigeria is today, one day they will expire. But the reign of our God is forever. And the Bible said, and ever. We have so many ex, 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 ex presidents in our country today, but we never had any ex God. Our God reigns forever. Southeast Governors Forum has called on the federal government to include the expansion of the tarmac of the Akanu Ibiam International Airport, Enugu, in the planned rehabilitation work at the airport. The chairman of the forum, Governor Dave Umahi of Eboi, made the call when he briefed State House correspondent after a closed door meeting with President Mohamed Buhari at the presidential villa Abuja. He said the call had become imperative in order to accommodate bigger aircraft at the airport. He said that Southeast governors were delighted with the president for ordering the closure of the airport, consequent to the letter to him to intervene. He was sure that with the closure, lots of lives will be saved, saying that anyone who lands at that tarmac will see that the tarmac was gone. Omahi revealed that he formally presented a request of the Southeast people, including the governor's leadership of Ohanese. Leadership of Unzuko Umuna, the clergy, bishops, and national assembly members who would want to have an interaction 
with Mr. President during the meeting. He added that he requested for joint security operations to address the menace of killer headsmen in the southeast, saying he informed the president that southeast governors have burned the foreign bandits in the name of headsmen. The Controller General of the Nigeria Immigration Service, Mohammed Babandede, has said the enhanced e-passport is acceptable and valid for entering all countries. He gave the reassurance in a statement by his public relations officer, Mr. Sunday James, in Abuja on Thursday. The Control General's reassurance is coming against the backdrop of the recent problem of the e-passport with the authority of the United Arab Emirates. He encouraged Nigerians to get their national identity number and ensure that the information tallies with the one on their passport. Babandede also said the uniformity of the national identity number information and that of the 10-year validity passport is to ensure one identity, which is a major feature of the new enhanced e-passport. He further said that the new passport was available in the service headquarters Abuja and Ikoi pending the rollout in other centers. News on the hour will be back after this short break. Please stay with us. Hello there. Have you ever wondered why Jesus spoke in parables? What do you make of the word parable? Do you find it hard interpreting parables on your own? Don't worry. We have answers to those questions on parables. Parables is a program that brings to bear what parable means and how it affects our day-to-day -day lifestyles, the church, the individual and the society at large. Join me, Uzubechi Frank, as we explore the significance and the inner meaning of each parable of Jesus Christ. Coming to you every Saturday, 1 to 1.30 p.m. with repeat broadcast on Sundays, 7 a.m., Tuesdays, 3.30 p.m. and Thursdays, 7 a.m. From the Anglican Cable Network, Nigeria, ACNN. God bless you. You're welcome back. Thanks for staying tuned. For more on our top stories, please visit our website at acnntv.com or youtube.com forward slash acnntv. And to be up to date with our news and other programs, download the ACNN app for Android from Google Play Store. And now to international news. Concerns have been raised regarding the unfortunate situation Nigerians and other Africans found themselves in South Africa. This concern was raised by the Diocesan Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of the West and Missionary Bishop, Kana Church of Nigeria, Anglican Communion, the Right Reverend Felix Oji. According to the cleric, Nigerians in South Africa must take responsibility for their behaviors and actions that may have so repetitiously angered South Africans and then escalated into such wanton violence in both Nigeria and South Africa. He recalled how he and others were zealots against apartheid in South Africa when he was in the university. He sadly said that the situation where black Africans oppressing other black Africans who stood up for them in their time of need is rather unfortunate. Pleading for peace, Bishop Oji said that retaliation against South Africans in Nigeria is not a good thing because two wrongs cannot make a right. He called on Nigeria to take the high moral role and be a good example of sanity in the midst of mass insanity by showing restraint. The bishop further stressed that if the lives of Nigerians in South Africa are in danger, it is important they are evacuated immediately, adding that Nigeria should use political and economic means to ensure South Africa pays the cost of such evacuations. All Saint Anglican Church, Yetsville, Maryland, USA, in the Anglican Diocese of the Trinity, played host to double celebrations of consecration of the Right Reverend Dr. Dokun and Mama Modupe Adewumi to the Episcopacy, and also the celebration for Adult Region 3. The celebrations were chaired by their diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Amos and Mama Abike Fagbamie, and the Most Reverend Dr. Olushegun and Mama Juliet Okun Badejo, Archbishop Ibadan Province and Bishop Diocese of Ibadan North for a double celebration. 
during the celebration of the consecration of the right Reverend Dr. Dokun and Mama Modupe Adeumi, the preacher at the celebration service was the most Reverend Dr. Olushegu Okunbadejo, who highlighted how Bishop Adeumi and his wife started All Saints Anglican Church with faith, hope, and steadfastness, built it into what it has become today. On the celebration for Anglican Diocese of the Trinity Region Tree, the clergy, clergy, wives, and delegates from New England and Mid-Atlantic Archdeaconry were in attendance at the service. The Right Reverend Amos Fagbamie in his sermon urged the congregation to be witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Robert Mugabe, Zimbabwean independent icon and former president, has died at the age of 95. He reportedly died in a hospital where he had been receiving treatment in Singapore on Friday morning. Mr. Mugabe had been receiving treatment in a hospital in Singapore since April. He was ousted in a military coup in 2017 after 37 years in power. He served as Prime Minister of Zimbabwe from 1980 to 1987 and then as President from 1987 to 2017. Mugabe's successor, Emerson Namgagwa, the current Zimbabwean president, confirmed the incident on his Twitter handle as he announced the passing on of Zimbabwe's founding father and former president. The uncompromising ex-president, who was deposed in a coup in 2017, left a missed legacy. He had been touted worldwide as the hope of his country an icon of Zimbabwe's independence before he oversaw the nation's descent into economic ruin. After news broke of his death, some world leaders and political groups reflected the early hopeful image of Mugabe and focused on his fight to free his country from white minority rule. The South African government tweeted its condolences, describing Mugabe as a fearless pan-Africanist liberation fighter. The African National Congress, South Africa's ruling party, also released a statement calling him the epitome of the new African, who, having struck off the colonial yoke, will strive to ensure his country took its rightful place amongst the community of nations. In a statement, Kenya President Uhuru Kenyatta called Mugabe an elder statesman, a freedom fighter and a pan-Africanist, who played a major role in shaping the interests of the African continent. A man of courage who was never afraid to fight for what he believed in, even when it was not popular. The U.S. Embassy in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare, also tweeted condolences to the Mugabe family, joining the world in reflecting on his legacy in securing Zimbabwe's independence. And now to sports stories. Madagascar has pulled out of Saturday's planned friendly match hastily arranged by the South African Football Association after their initial opponent, Zambia, pulled out of the friendly a few days ago. The Bafana Bafana were originally set to face Zambia in Lusaka, the capital of Zambia, as part of their warm-up features before their Afghan qualifiers in November. But the match was cancelled on Tuesday after Zambia withdrew citing xenophobic attacks on foreign nationals in South Africa. The South African Football Association hastily arranged a replacement with Madagascar and even announced free entry for supporters attending the features at Orlando Stadium in Soweto. However, the Malagasy Football Federation in a statement on Thursday afternoon said it is pulling out of the planned friendly, citing security reasons. That's how it has been on the news on the hour. It's brought to you from the Anglican Cable Network, Nigeria. I am Rachel Egun. Thanks for watching.